Welcome back fellow problem solvers. John East here with mathematics, right? It's lots of fun as you've known previously with parallel lines. Today we're starting with a new topic called graphs. Like how to visually represent things. Like how do we analyze it? How do we interpret it? Stay tuned and you will find out. Share, like and subscribe. Good day fellow problem solvers. Yes, we're continuing this chapter on graphs, this inter interpretation of graphs. This is our very first session, so let's look at it straight away. So first of all, let's look at a few uh, terminologies, right? Linear relationship versus a non-linear relationship. And if you think carefully, it's exactly what it says. Is there a linear relationship between two quantities? There's the first quantity we would refer to is the independent variable. That is the one that you choose. Let's say you choose a value of... Um, well, x in this case, what will be the corresponding y value? Now, if the relationship between the x and the y is a straight line, then we call it a linear relationship. So this has to be a straight line for it to be linear. Okay, then a non-linear relationship is exactly, again, the same thing. We are looking at the independent variable, the one that you choose, versus the output value, the dependent variable. And if the relationship is not a straight line, then we call it a nonlinear relationship. So it's very important to remember, not straight means nonlinear. Straight means linear. Okay, then the second concept I would like to explain is the difference between an independent variable and a dependent variable. So independent variable is a quantity being manipulated. Now, for me, this is a little bit vague. I would like to clarify. This is the one that I would say this is the input value. Okay, so this is the one that you are choosing, input. So I'm saying, okay... Uh, let's take this as time, like 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 minutes. And the 10, 20, 30, and 40 is the amount of jelly beans being thrown into a bucket. Um, the input values, I want to know, okay, in 2 minutes, how many jelly beans has been thrown into the bucket? Now, according to this graph, it's 20, okay? So you can see the input value is, I'm asking, at this amount of time, two minutes, and then the output value, which is the dependent variable, the output value will then be my answer. You know, in two minutes, there's 20 jelly beans in a bucket. So the output is dependent on the input, which is independent. That's what they say, the quantity being manipulated. In other words, I, I am choosing my input value. Then the dependent variable is the quantity being observed. Now that is my answer. What do I get out? So the same here with any graph. Let's say this is also a representation of the amount of jelly beans into a bucket. At two minutes, we know in this specific case, we can read it off the graph. The answer is about 60, 65. Uh, so you understand. So input is independent. And that's normally the one on the x-axis. That's the one that's independent. That's where you put it. You always put your independent variable on the x-axis. Your dependent variable, you put on the y-axis. That means the vertical axis. Hopefully this is clear. Uh, let's look at the second part of this video. Minimum and maximum point on the graph. Now, if you observe over here the green graph, you can see its highest output value, the highest y value, right over there, that is the highest will go, that's the maximum point. Whenever we look at a maximum and minimum point, we always look at the output value, the, that which is on the y axis. Okay, so maximum point is the maximum value that the dependent variable can have in the graph. So remember your dependent variable is on the y axis, your independent variable is always on the x-axis. Now the same here with the minimum point. 
you can see that's the lowest output value that's right over here and that's our minimum point um, so the minimum value or that the dependent variable can have in the graph so this is a good example where it's relevant you can see for the green graph this is a local minimum but that value is still lower so we don't really have a minimum the same for the red graph we don't have a maximum it will just go on uh, having a higher value increase as the dependent the independent value increases so this is the difference between a minimum and a maximum point and thirdly, let's look at what a continuous graph is and what a discrete graph is. Continuous is exactly what it says. A continuous graph is a graph that continues like the yellow one. You can see it just continues. It doesn't stop. There's no break in the graph. So it's a graph made, uh, made of a set of points that are joined by a curved line. So the moment you see a line like this, then you know it's continuous. But... On the contrary, if we look at a discrete graph, it's a graph made of a set of points that are not joined by the line, like the green graphs. All these dots, they represent a discrete graph. It's not continuous. It's not joined by a line. It's just the dots. That is a discrete. So here we go. These are the, the basic terminologies for graphs. Remember, a graph is a visual representation right a graph is a visual representation that shows your relationship between quantities so please add here it is a visual okay it's something that you see so that will help you to remember it as well stay tuned for the next video on graphs